Серёжа, Сергей. Майк. Майк. Олег Валерьевич. Олег. Like you've just seen your spacecraft ready to fly, what's your feeling like? Oh, it's fantastic to see it at this point. Uh, it's all packed up, ready to go. It's kind of like a pilot on his last walk around of the airplane before he takes off. This is happening five days before the launch, but it's, uh, it's still pretty neat to see it in its final configuration. Alec, my first question is, for you, the person who is uh, flying into space for the third time, is there a difference between a first flight and a second flight? What is important for a cosmonaut to prepare, to be healthy, to have friends who are waiting for you to return to Earth or what? Well, it's a long question. Or it has, rather, it has many components. So I'll answer the first half of the question. Each flight is unique. It's a different vehicle. You would, you may think that they, it, all the vehicles look the same, but they're not. Each crew is special. Each mission is different, including goals and objectives. Now, the sense of risk and fear, I think everybody is prone, prone to fear. So what's important is for you to be able to overcome this tension, this sense of danger, and fulfill your responsibilities. I would say that our crew is prepared both physically and morally, emotionally, and we're prepared to complete the objectives of our flight. So, but health and family are also important, right? So which one is more important? You can't pick one over the other. You need to have reliable hardware. You need to have good health. You can't say this is more important, this is less important in space flight. I have more experience, that is true. And I understand what to expect during launch, what to expect when we're on orbit, what to expect during the descent and landing. And so that really is a good advantage. How many flights is the maximum number of flights in space? Is it three or four? Well, you know history that there have been up to seven flights for one person. So I think you're only limited by your desire and by your health. Can you step closer here, Sergey? Do you think that we have to fly in space, overcome the boundaries of humanity and try to fly further? Yes, I think that uh, in the future we will always fly. There will always be engineers who are striving to create new spacecraft and fly further. If you think about it this way, used to be it used to take a long time to travel even to a neighboring city, and now it's nothing. So this is our goal for the future to expand our space flight and the boundaries. You know that you would say expanding the boundaries is a human nature. Once you achieve one objective, you want to move further. That's normal. So again, that's just part and parcel of who we are as humans, the desire to make yet another step into the future. 
and push the boundaries and go the distance. Tell, tell me a bit about your family. What, um, what, the, what are they uh, think about your job? Uh, well, they're on a plane right now showing up in Moscow, getting ready to come down here for, for the launch. So uh, they're just very excited about it. Uh, they're, they know this is something that I've been uh, working for for a long time. And so they're just, uh, I'm very happy that they're going to be able to be here and, and be a part of it. I have to say that being prepared help, helps. It's great to be with a commander who is so experienced. Just the general atmosphere within our crew, it's very important. Thank you very much. Are we done? No, one more question, please. Training in, is in a way a psychological experiment. Do you still have romantic notions of this profession that you started out with? You cannot avoid being a romantic. You have to be very romantic to follow your dreams to fly in space, especially with the second flight and the third flight. You know exactly what to expect. You know exactly what's going to happen. There will be nothing new that you will experience, but this romantic feeling this dream to see your planet from space, your desire to do something useful and do new work, that is something that drives you and pushes you forward. Everyone, that's a rocket. We are happy to greet you here. Thank you so much, and you're well and welcome. This is a fragment of the spacecraft to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's flight. And maybe a group photograph? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so should we sign it here? Yes, pick a spot. Looks like all the spots are taken. And since then, everybody signs. So here's the very first signature of one brave individual who signed it first. And this is why we show it to everyone. When you're done, my good luck. So we would like for you to sign this flag as well.
When you have a reliable friend and backup crew member, you always feel secure. Thank you very much. Let's uh, do another group photo. So does it differ in any way? Well, of course it's different because you realize that in five days you're going to be actually calling on the rocket and getting ready to launch into space. So there's certainly a, a bit of a different emotion here, but it's uh, the same tradition in the sense that we got to, after the second pick check, come back, visit the museum here. A lot of history here, a lot of uh, great stories, and so it's just wonderful to be a part of. Смотри, прям через эту Да.
Joel Montalbano, Deputy ISS Program Manager here in Baikonur. Joel, Soyuz uh, TMA-10M vehicle now vertical on the launch pad, set to go on uh, Wednesday afternoon U.S. time. Can it get any busier at the International Space Station right now? You know, Rob, it's a great day to be in Baikonur. You know, standing in front of the launch pad that launched the first human in space, there's just a magic here, and you feel that magic. Could it get busier? Yeah, it's going to get a little busier for the rest of the year. we got a real busy schedule going, but this is what we do, and this is what we do best. The three crew members, you have two first-time flyers in Mike Hopkins and Sergey Rozanski, but a wealth of experience in the Soyuz commander, Alec Kotov. How will this crew blend on orbit for what promises to be a very busy five and a half months? Uh, this crew is going to do great. Oleg is an outstanding commander. We have a lot of experience with him on board. The two rookies have trained together. The whole crew has trained together. They've trained across the globe at the different uh, different partner centers. We're looking forward to them. We expect these guys are just going to do a, a fantastic job on orbit. You mentioned the busy time ahead for the space station. Just six weeks from now, yet another Soyuz will be on the pad. 
You're going to have nine crew members on the station for about three and a half days, an Olympic <laughs> torch arriving on board, symbolic for next year's Winter Olympics. <laughs> Talk a little bit about this air traffic control pattern at the station. Well, as you said, Rob, you know, we have the Soyuz in November. We have an orbital mission right now that's in free flight that'll be berthing to the space station this week. We have another orbital mission scheduled in December, a SpaceX uh, early next year. But this is what the partnership does. We work together. We have a European vehicle up there right now. We just deorbited the Japanese transfer vehicle. Again, we work together. We get things done. We use space station for what it's designed for. And, and as you know, space station is the largest project ever taken upon by human human mankind and we just do a great job and the partners chip they pull together when you need them and in november 15th anniversary joel of the first element launch of the zarya module the fgb uh, talk a little bit about uh, how this complex has grown into this research city in the sky from that single lone module you know when we started space station we worked uh, with the partnership. We had the first launch, the FGB launch from Baikonur, and we've built upon it. Now that assembly's complete, we're using the space station for utilization. That's what it was designed for. We are doing, uh, we're scheduled to do up to 40 hours of crew utilization, crew time per week on the average for this expedition. That'll be the largest uh, amount of utilization we've done since we've been flying space station. Ellen Ochoa, director of the Johnson Space Center. Ellen, welcome back to Baikonur. Uh, crystal clear day today for the Soyuz TMA-10M spacecraft. Uh, it is a complex time at the International Space Station, a very intricate choreography about to unfold. Talk a little bit about the preparedness of our three crew members about to embark on this journey. Well, the three crew, of course, have been trained uh, all over the world, including at Johnson Space Center. They're well prepared. I no concerns at all about that. Um, it's a very interesting time at the station. I was lucky enough to be at Wallops on the east coast of the United States last week to see the launch of Antares and Cygnus. And now I get to be here for this launch. And so we're looking forward to two vehicles uh, coming toward the station this week. Air traffic control around the station, a very, very complex choreography about to unfold. Uh, just six weeks from now, yet another Soyuz will be on the pad for the next trio to be launched. Uh, the five and a half months that lie ahead for Mike Hopkins, Oleg Kotov, and Sergei Rosansky uh, will be uh, very challenging. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the, the vehicle traffic is one of the things that they'll be having to deal with. Um, but as well, it's a very busy time in terms of science on board the station. Uh, so we do fundamental science up there. We do research and development that's more associated with direct benefits on Earth, including in human health as well as uh, Earth observing uh, many other types of things. And then, of course, we're using it as, as a test bed for exploration. Uh, we've got an experiment on board, or a mean swing bed, a, a test bed, that's looking at a new way of scrubbing uh, CO2 out of the atmosphere that we hope to use for the Orion spacecraft, uh, which will take crew beyond low Earth orbit. So lots of exciting things on board ISS.